Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Peter John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! Hey, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and look at this. Joining me is my old tag team partner to the masses. They all know him as James Kincaid, but to me, he will always be Bimbo Jimbo. How's it going, man? Man, for the true believers, a voice from In The Click's past. Oh, I'm excited to be back on here with you, man. This is, uh, uh, it's, it's fun. <laughs> no, it's- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked that you'd, you'd have me. And uh, yeah, for, for everybody that didn't remember, I used, to, I used to be on here with you for, you know, for those that are, are newer listeners. Uh, Huey and I started this thing, and I, I just, I want to say I'm so, I'm so proud of how you've kept it going and kept it growing. Uh, you've done so many amazing interviews and covered so many events, uh, you know, in the, you know, wh- while we were doing it together and now s- since my departure and everything, and it's just, it's just been really cool to, uh, to see you keep, keep it rolling and all, and all the good stuff you're doing. Well, they- it's good to be back, man. I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Shawn Michaels, when he came back, you know, after the back injury, but when he came back as like Commissioner Michaels, and he was, uh, I was in the click before in the click was cool, and you're like Triple H, you know, so it's, it, it works. It works. Well, well. <laughs> well, okay. Well, first off, thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. all that, all the kind words. I do appreciate that. But also, yeah, since you've been gone, I've had a a, 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 a group of, of misfits, I guess you could say, like Triple H had, you know, various members of DX come in and stuff. So, uh, no, it's very now, exciting. My music. <laughs> God damn it. You're just gonna make uh, me I'll giggle again. The sheriff is back in town. It's good to be back, baby. <laughs> oh my god. See that look at this. You're gonna make me giggle now. Back. Exactly. <laughs> look at what we do. <laughs> oh my god. That's the thing. It took us like five minutes just to get going because you made me start laughing again. <laughs> I think I'm you a- should include that. I'll, I'll include part of it, part yeah. of the conversation. But uh, no, uh, Jimbo, very happy to uh, have you back for this episode. Uh, uh, it's a very special one. So uh, it's kind of a two parter. So, full disclaimer Jimbo is joining me right now because uh, for a purpose, uh, tomorrow night. So, full disclaimer, we're recording on a thursday this episode will probably be out i would i'm gonna try to shoot for tonight if not friday morning afternoon ish uh but you're promoting west coast pro wrestling their big show tomorrow night in south san francisco and um after we do that then uh brian tronic will be making his way in so he's running a little late right now so you and i are going to handle business for west coast pro wrestling right now do a preview and then we'll get brian tronic on on the second half of the podcast breaking down wrestlemania backlash I love Brian Tronic, by the way. Yes, he's, I, I gotta, he's I awesome. Say, he, he, he's a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal talent, great personality. And I, I'm sorry that he can't be here with us right now. But I do like the old school in the click vibes that we got going here as we, as we get ready to talk about West Coast pro wrestling. Uh, ill-mannered. Yeah, uh, yeah. They were May 13th. So, yes, we are recording this the, the night before. Um yeah, it's going to it's going to be a heck of a show. A lot of people are saying it's the biggest show in West Coast Pro history. Really? And, you know, it's I mean, it's hard to argue with that, but they've had so many big shows since returning from the pandemic. But it mm-hmm. d- does, you know, Scott and Levi and Vinny, everybody West Coast and uh, myself uh, as a as the the voice of West Coast Pro Wrestling, which I take very seriously. Uh, it's just they've been putting out 
we've been putting out great show after great show to be a small part of that is is always very humbling super well great. well then that's the thing before we get into the card just real quick if you just want to sum up what you've been up to as of late so besides west coast pro wrestling also uh uh you know championship wrestling from hollywood all that stuff so can you just kind of you know yeah. fill the clicksters in about what you've been doing in the pro wrestling business yeah so uh i i you know made my departure and have been sort of more fully chasing my dream within the pro wrestling business from the the commentary side which is what I've always dreamt about doing. And it's been uh, such a, an amazing sort of thing to come about in the midst of the pandemic, because I, you know, when it started, I thought everything was kind of going up in smoke, but I ended up getting more opportunities than I ever have. So Mm -hmm. uh, I am the voice of West coast pro wrestling as their lead play by play commentator, uh, which is just super cool. And I, I I love doing all those shows uh, for them. And so I, I I said uh, with the, you know, uh, pro wrestling unlimited guys that, you know, I'm West coast till I die. So, you know, I just very, very loyal to them. I also extremely loyal to the all new championship wrestling, formerly championship wrestling from Hollywood, but mm. they uh, sort of consolidated all their brands into one and is now just championship wrestling. And okay, so cool. uh, I am the sort of the, the second down there uh, alongside uh, TK Todd Kennelly, who is just a phenomenal broadcaster to work alongside as well. Uh, And, you know, working alongside Veda Scott and Alyssa Marino uh, at West Coast Pro Wrestling is great. And then also uh, doing Circle Six, which is a which is a new wrestling promotion, sort of the more in the more of the hardcore side of, of, of things, you know, kind of that ECW vibe going going to them. And uh, they've they've had a couple of shows now uh, and they're super awesome to work mm-hmm. with. I encourage everyone to check them out as well. Check out all that that good stuff, not just because I'm, I'm doing commentary for it, but like some really just legitimately amazing stuff that all of those promotions are putting out. And just in Cleveland for Circle Six got to uh, call a killer cross match, which made me super happy. And not only that, it was in an arena that last hosted wrestling was by ECW. And in that cross match, they had a very ECW esque affair. So I got to call a thumbtack spot, got to bust out a Joey styles. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Did you, uh, I, I hope so for the clicksers, I, I think the old school fans know that you do your, 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 uh, <laughs> your, 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 your main, uh, your full-time job, your, your shoot job is, uh, with the Golden State Warriors. So I hope you wore your championship ring in Cleveland. I did. Absolutely. Okay. I was decked out in full Warriors gear in Cleveland. Funny little story about that. I actually, uh, loaned, uh, nice guy, Vinny, Vinny Massaro, my Warriors sweatshirt I brought with me so he could wear that to the ring to also incite the Cleveland fans. So that was, that was pretty cool for me. But yeah, when I, when I landed there, I was, I was worried that the like Uber drivers weren't going to pick me up because of how I was dressed. But yeah, it was uh, it was nice being back in Cleveland. Last time I was there before that is when we swept the Cavaliers. So yeah, oh, it was fun fun reliving uh, those those memories. Who's your daddy, Cleveland? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I digress. Yes, we talk about West Coast Pro Wrestling, ill mannered, which. It will be in the stateroom in South San Francisco, a great venue for pro wrestling. The the home base of West Coast Pro Wrestling is such a cool uh, venue, but it is sold out. Mm-hmm. So if you've okay. not got your tickets yet, uh, you know, sorry, but you can you can you can listen to myself and Veda Scott on commentary on independent pro wrestling TV. We will be streaming it live and you will get all the action there. And I mean, like this card is crazy. You know, Will Ospreay and Titus Alexander, mm-hmm. Thatcher, Kevin Blackwood, Biff Busick, Vinny Massaro, Billy Starks, Dark Sheik. Timeless Levi Shapiro and J.D. Drake, A.J. Gray versus Robert Martyr. I'm very interested in that one. I'm a big, big fan of both those guys. But in particular, uh, Robert Martyr's story is one that stands out to me quite a bit. The conglomerate taking on Reno Scum and fellow Renoer Carl Fredericks. Very cool matchup there, seeing Carl going to team with the Reno Scum. Dutch and Bateman taking on the West Coast Wrecking Crew, rounding out the affair. So, Ill-mannered. I mean, it's stacked. Like the card is insane. I love seeing the reaction on Twitter. People are like, dude, this is just crazy. The stuff that West Coast is putting out. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. When this match got, or this this show first got a match a couple months ago, I was just stoked for the fact that Will Osprey is going to be there. Just, yeah. un- I think the last time you and I saw him wrestle in person was at the Cow Palace for that New Japan show, um, or no, and also in Long Beach, I believe. Uh, I think so. It's been a few years now. God, it's been so long. But still, just the fact that Will Ospreay 
one of the top guys from New Japan Pro Wrestling is coming to the Bay Area to wrestle at West Coast Pro Wrestling. That's awesome. And also for Titus Alexander, like he's been tearing it up locally here or Northern California wrestling scene. And to see him get this opportunity to work probably one of his biggest opponents to date, that's, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, Titus Alexander, I, I think I said it on the call the, the last show, is that he's he's no longer just the best kept secret in mm-hmm. professional wrestling. Like he is arriving with each and every match, you know, just announcing himself more firmly. And this, yeah, you can make the argument that this is absolutely his his biggest match to date. I think he has said so. Uh, and it's just it's been this constant leveling up process for him. I mean, you know, taking on Alex Shelley, not once, but twice, including mm-hmm. championship, albeit short lived uh, from him <laughs> yeah. and, you know, a couple of months ago. Like all the things that he's doing, he's just he's amazing. T- Titus Alexander, for in spite of how he conducts himself and carries himself and how he betrayed Starboy Charlie, there, <laughs> there is no denying Titus Alexander's talent. And I am very much so looking forward to seeing him sort of ply that against Will Ospreay, who is somebody who obviously mm. no introduction, uh, you know, this match of the year machine that, that is Will Ospreay. And I think they're going to pair very well together. I'm, I'm just, I'm so, so looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, Titus, I, I, I encourage everybody to go out there and watch Titus Alexander's matches. Just watch how a lot of guys can flip. A lot of guys can fly, but not many fly with the sort of majesty and precision of a Titus Alexander. He, he's really something to behold. Oh, well, and that's the other thing, too, is keep in mind, you know, Will Ospreay is a former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. So, he, like, for many people, that's one of the, the the ultimate title you can get or, like, the most respectable title one can get in pro wrestling. So the fact that Titus Alexander is facing this, facing this guy, that, that's huge. So it's going to be very exciting. And, you know, Titus Alexander, he's definitely, I think, been one of the pillars for reestablishing uh, Bay Area pro wrestling, Northern California pro wrestling posts coming out of this pandemic. And so I'm just excited to see his stock keep rising and what's next for him as far as, you know, just putting on, you know, I, I know some people hate this term being overused, but banger matches. And, <laughs> and so I'm excited for that match. It's probably gonna be like the number one match I'm looking forward to, but probably the second one. Yeah. I gotta be honest is Timothy Thatcher versus Kevin Blackwood. I'm a huge Timothy Thatcher fan. Obviously, you know, for anyone that's you know lived in the Bay Area f- for long enough and followed pro wrestling, especially on independent scene, we know Timothy Thatcher, homegrown talent from Sacramento. Uh, obviously, grew up in the, the APW system, and you know, most recently was uh, in NXT. Had a great career over in Europe as well with uh, Ringconf, Walters, or excuse me, Gunther's uh, old faction. But so, but Timothy Thatcher was an amazing person in the NXT roster on the old the old era the black and gold era RIP by the way but um so but no but Timothy Thatcher I'm excited this is I think the first time most of us at least locally here are going to see him in person since he signed with WWE and also you know since he got unfortunately released not too long ago you know he's kind of coming back out now and doing some matches and in, uh, independent shows so I'm excited to see him in person yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, gosh, you know, I haven't seen if, what other bookings he maybe has done since being released, but I, I do know that I was on the call for his his last, pretty much his last one before he got called to NXT. Yeah, I think he was in Dallas. He was in Dallas WrestleMania weekend, okay. I think, doing something. Uh, there was a hotel there that WrestleCon was at. I unfortunately didn't get over there, just didn't have time, but there was a lot of shows going on in this hotel and that like facility that, that this place was held at. Um, I know he wrestled there and um, you know, he's been taking bookings, so he's getting back out there. Yeah, uh, I'm stoked. Yeah. It's, it's welcome, a welcome sight to have him back in the Bay area scene. Uh, you know, I, I used to watch him, you know, back in Hayward when he was with all pro wrestling and mm-hmm. you could see it then that he just had something special and he's, he's continued to get better throughout his career and has done some really amazing things. And then on the other side of him, I mean, Kevin Blackwood, 
who I believe Veda Scott uh, said that he is arguably the face of independent professional wrestling uh, mm. a couple of months ago. And, you know, he is just, he's got that sort of one to watch feel about him. You always want to stop what you're doing and watch Kevin Blackwood work. And in West coast pro wrestling alone, he's, he's just put together this amazing body of work as two just instant classics with Davey Richards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just uh, get, do yourself a favor and go back and watch those. If you, if you haven't, I'm still hoping for the, the rubber match between between those two coming down the line. And then he, you know, he took on Minoru Suzuki at the at the last show. Incredible match, and I think an incredible moment for him to get to follow that up, uh, taking on Timothy Thatcher. That's that's quite a run. If I could sum up his last match with Suzuki, I, I'm not even going to use a word. I'm just going to use a sound. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's all you need to know. Why you need to watch that match. Yeah, absolutely. Pain uh, <laughs> abound throughout the whole thing, but you know he 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 uh, he looked pretty good doing it. I I, I got to say, yeah, I love I love Kevin Blackwood, uh, Timothy Thatcher, same thing. So I, I think yeah, it's that one will not disappoint. And seeing Blackwood talking about he's going to try and hit hit him as hard as he can before uh, Thatcher, I think, can you know start twisting his his body. <laughs> So Blackwood great with the striking. He's great with the submission skills in his own right, though. So that's that's gonna you know. What we saw with him against Davy Richards, I think we could see some sort of similarities there with Thatcher. Okay. Uh, well, and how they sort of go about it, you know. Well, well, I was just gonna say a couple things though with, with Kevin Blackwood, as far as you know, he's another one like Tyus Alexander, who's really become like a pillar for West Coast pro wrestling. Someone who's been kind of like a regular we see at these shows, and you know, helping kind of establish what West Coast Pro Wrestling's identity is as a promotion on the independent scene, and um, as far as being like. West Coast has become like the top promotion in the Bay Area, if not all of Northern California. And for me with Kevin Blackwood, also what's really cool is, uh, is he originally from Buffalo, right? Okay, so he's kind of came up, the, you know, with the ranks with Daniel Garcia. Also, uh, was it Lee Moriarty, I remember? Or like, you know, he's friends with all those guys. So it's like, it's like that collection of upcoming young independent pro wrestlers. He's kind of from that same group, right? Yeah. So he, yeah, he's, he's one of the, the Buffalo boys. And, okay. uh, you know, he is, like you said, though, become a mainstay out here at West coast pro wrestling out here in California, you know, mm-hmm. he up and moved out here, he bet on himself and it's, it's really paying off for him. You know, I think if you talk to him, there was some uncertainty before he, before he came out here, if it was going to really pay off and, and it has, and, um, yeah, he, he is going to continue to do big things. Like he, he is, like we said, you know, arguably the face of independent professional wrestling and the guy to watch or one of the guys to watch here in you know, 2022 and beyond. Absolutely. And of course, speaking of like, you know, Timothy Thatcher, NXT, someone else from NXT was, uh, uh, I mean, for the masses, we remember him as Oni Lorcan, but, uh, you know, now that he's unfortunately no longer with WWE, he's going back to his old name, Biff Busick. Am I pronouncing that right? Busick? Busick. Busick. So, uh, yeah, so he's going to be making his appearance with West Coast Pro Wrestling, taking on Vinny Massaro, who's, um, Jimbo, as you mentioned, he's one of, you know, the, the men behind the scenes with West Coast, West Coast Pro Wrestling, one of the head trainers for West Coast Pro Wrestling's, uh, Wrestling Academy. But also Vinny is, you can say, a mainstay, a pillar of West Coast Pro Wrestling as well. And so, yeah, he's going to be taking on Biff here, which, uh, you know, we know Vinny. He, he, he's a NorCal legend, Bay Area legend. You know, he he uh, is not afraid to mix up and uh, uh, you know, go out there and just lay in the people a little bit of his version of strong style. But yeah, so Biff, another you know amazing technical wrestler. So this match, I'm definitely also looking forward to seeing. Yeah, no no doubt about it. And Vinny Massaro, I mean, there's. <laughs> Guys wrestled John Cena. He's wrestled Masala. <laughs> he he has wrestled pretty much all of your favorite wrestlers. Brian and, Danielson, right? And yeah, and you know, look, I mean, looking back at this, just he's he. I, I talk about this pretty much every Vinny Masaro match I call, and mm-hmm. he deserves it. Uh, is this renaissance that he is having that's really started when we came back in 2021, and now moving here to 2022? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that match he had with Ishii really churned a lot of heads and I know he wasn't victorious in it and he doesn't believe in, in moral victories, but uh, I mean, it was a, it was just an incredible, incredible match. I love Vinny Massaro versus Ishii. I thought, I thought it was so great. Mm-hmm. That was kind of a turning point for, uh, you, know, you know, how he was sort of viewed by the, the West coast flock in a certain sense, because 
you know, he'd been sort of playing the this kind of like looked at bitterness almost as a veteran. And then that was kind of okay. like a, a corner turn for him that he is still just going out there and giving it absolutely everything he has and is putting on some of the best matches of his career. He followed that up with a win over Daniel Garcia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's just, he it goes on and on. And now, so for him to take on Biff Busick, uh, incredible opportunity for Vinny. Uh, and, you know, Biff's going to have to, going to have to bring it against the, the, the nice guy and uh, got to, got to call a uh, Biff Busick match at circle six. Uh, so seeing what he can do in person uh, is always, you know, a, just a, a great experience as well. Uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot of foundational pieces of West coast pro wrestling taking on, uh, you know, getting huge opportunities here. From and that, uh, well, outsiders. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, and, and, you know, for anyone who comes to West Coast Pro Wrestling on a regular basis, uh, we know Jacob Fatu is the current West Coast Pro Wrestling champion. And, you know, he's been another pillar for, for the promotion for the last, you know, year of its, uh, since it's coming out of the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, he's not on this show because he has obligations with MLW. I remember getting the press release early this week and it said he was going to, him and Juicy Finau were going to be in Philadelphia for the MLW show. And I was like, wait, the same night as Ill Manor. And then I went to go check the, the match, uh, cards. I was like, oh, he's not listed. I guess he won't be there, but it's okay. Cause like I said, this card is so stacked with so many other names. It's okay for Jacob to take this Friday off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, ill-mannered, stacked from top to bottom. It is sold out. So if you do want to watch, you know, these matches that we're talking about, it will be on, you know, independent wrestling TV. So go to IWTV and and check out the stream with with myself and Veda Scott. So for anyone who doesn't know, is that just like it's a a streaming service where you can just log in, create an account, subscribe, and you can just watch any independent pro wrestling that, you know, feeds the system? Yeah, that they have on their on their sort of um, library or gallery. So they have okay. certain live shows. It's it's really cool. It's kind of like the WWE Network for independent professional wrestling in a certain sense. And so yeah, it's uh, you go to independentwrestling.tv mm-hmm. and you can check it out. I'm I'm looking at it right now, and it's promoting the upcoming live streams. And and ill mannered is is right on there. So nice. Yeah, independentwrestling.tv. Hop on the stream. Uh, I, I, I like to think that we have a, a pretty good time and, and, and do a good job uh, calling the action at West Coast Pro Wrestling. I get super animated and uh, very emotional. Like my my voice went out uh, like right after uh, Fatu and Bandito finished. My voice was just was shot like they, they had me just, you know, just popping all over the place. And uh, so we, we have a good time. I think we do a really good job. Uh, on on the stream, so I, I encourage y'all to check it out. Is that like a monthly subscription? Is that how it works? Yep. Okay, cool, awesome. So yeah, I encourage everyone to subscribe, and that way, you know, moving forward, you know, if, if you're not here in the Bay Area or can't make it, you can just watch it on or live stream it live or watch it on demand later. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really cool. On demand, like the day or two after, like okay. The one- I was like, it's been the day after, and so they, they they turn it around quickly. And there's lots of other great stuff. Uh, for everybody to to watch and, and enjoy on there is, as well. Okay, uh, let's see. I know Jimbo, you got you got uh, places to be, so let's power through the rest of this real quick. We see sure. Billy Starks versus Dark Sheik. Dark Sheik, we all know, you know, Bay another, area legend, you know, Hood Slam, all that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So seeing her be back in a West Coast Pro Ring is very cool, and you know, Billy Starks, young in the game, but you know, one of the the rising stars of women's wrestling. So that that should be really good. Uh, I want I want to highlight AJ Gray and Robert Martyr. So yes, a, former West Coast Pro champion. Uh, obviously, he was able to rebound from from losing that championship to Fatu. He did defeat Levi Shapiro, who we'll talk about in a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, AJ Gray has become another one of those you know stalwart pieces of West Coast Pro wrestling. AJ Gray can work Fridays, and we we love having him. Uh, and taking on Robert Martyr, who is making his return to West Coast Pro Wrestling. He took on Vinny Massaro the last time he was here yeah. in a losing effort. But Robert Martyr, to me, one of the most interesting people that I've talked to in, in professional wrestling. He's just a, he's a very thoughtful, uh, I, I think, a very deep individual. Like he was telling me before one of the second night he had wrestled back to back West Coast Pro shows uh, when we did the double shot in South City and then Santa Cruz. Mm. Uh, I got to know him a little bit and 
he he went pretty in depth with me about his story and his approach in professional wrestling, and it really left a strong impression on me. and And I definitely try and you know sort of reiterate that and, and translate that to the audience whenever I get to call a Robert Martyr match. But he the one of the most interesting things he told me mm-hmm. is that before every match that he has. He finds like a secluded area of the venue or whatever, keeps to himself, uh, takes personal time to convince himself that the match he's, that he is about to go have is the last match of his career, that this is the last night of his career and it's his final match. And so to go out there and, you know, leave it all on the line because he's not going to wrestle again. Wow. Uh, I, it's, I, I thought that was just such a, I was sort of blown away by just that like mentality that, that he goes in with every match that he tries to find that place within himself that like, this is my last match and I'm going to make it the best match that it possibly can be. And like going in with that mindset. So I really believe he he's going to do huge things in professional wrestling. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, you know, kind of his presentation, you know, maybe for the more casual fan or whoever he kind of reminds me of like, like a young King or Brian, as far as someone who's like very technical in the ring. And it's going to be interesting with contrasting styles with AJ Gray, who's more of like the brawler. <laughs> so seeing the two of them work together, I'm, I'm very fascinated how that's going to play out in the ring. Um, speaking of brawlers, the, Levi Shapiro, our boy, another West Coast Pro Wrestling mainstay, a pillar, one of the coaches with the with the academy school, taking on J.D. Drake, who we know from AEW. I mean, this is probably going to be the big Haas match of the night, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Levi Shapiro, you know, he recently returned for, from injury. He had to have surgery on his his nose. He literally has to wear a nasal dilator in the ring to keep his his breathing going so he can keep that conditioning up in the ring. And he dove right back in into the deep end, uh, taking on the former champion AJ Gray last month and now taking on J.D. Drake, another huge opportunity. And I think you said it before. I mean, Haas battle. I mean, this is definitely going to be that, you know, J.D. Drake. Uh, the blue collar badass, I believe, is still the the. Monica. <laughs> I mean, it is true. I mean, he he's you know bring you know grab a pail. You're going to work when you're you're taking on JD Drake, and I I just I I love seeing what Levi is bringing to pro wrestling as well. Again, you know these vignettes that he's been doing and putting out on social media, you know ta- you know sort of imparting that like how is he, he feeling and he, he Levi. He's a, he's a very strongly passionate guy. And, and so I, I love seeing more of that side of him come out to everyone, uh, you know, all the, all the fans and everything, getting to know him a little bit more and sort of understanding his thought process. And mm-hmm. you know, he was, he was, he's been on the sidelines for was for, on the sidelines for a little bit as West coast was really starting to take off. And he had just to sort of watch and, now that he's back, he's he's getting a chance to sort of reassert himself and show uh, that aggressive side of Levi Shapiro that he was starting to show uh, before he went down with the injury. And so I'm I'm, I'm very excited for him uh, to continue to be able to do that. And for me personally, like you know, what I love about watching Levi's matches is you know, he, his matches definitely stand out compared to some of the other maybe matches you might see at a West Coast Pro Wrestling show. You know, he is timeless Levi Shapiro, so he definitely embraces like that old school presentation and just old school style of wrestling so i i appreciate watching how he might kind of slow things down a little more ring psychology ground and pound brawler so levi i'm a big fan when he wrestles i make it a point to really focus in on it because it's definitely like a style that i grew up watching uh and so you know and today in independent pro wrestling scene you definitely see a lot more high flying and these a lot of over the top, you know, yeah. acrobatic type moves. So for Levi Shapiro, it's definitely a nice change of scenery and pace watching him in person. He he, he did he did dive to the outside yes. last match. I was I was stunned to see that from from Levi Shapiro, and you know, it, it, I I loved it though because it mm-hmm. was it was not it was not meant to be a, a gif on on wrestling Twitter. It was it was a you know it was meant to take out his opponent. Like it had it had purpose and a, an authority behind it. So he's he's always pulling out new tricks from his bag. And it's uh, I I mean I love Levi 
uh, on a personal level, and I and I and I really enjoy watching him work in the ring, and I'm excited to see JD Drake make his uh, you know West Coast uh, pro arrival as as well. And uh, you know we got two more matches here just to touch on real quick. So Dutch and Bateman taking on West Coast Wrecking Crew. I'm a big fan of West Coast Wrecking Crew. I mean, you know, Royce Isaacs. Obviously, I was a fan of him when he what he did in NWA a couple years ago. Uh, but these guys have also been kind of been more regular with West Coast Pro Wrestling with their uh, appearances and so I, I like them as a tag team they're really fun to watch and didn't they just win the pwg or they made their debut in pwg yeah, they, pwg yeah absolutely and now taking on dutch and bateman uh i love that we're getting dutch and bateman at west coast pro wrestling like this is going to be the west coast wrecking crew took on reno scum it, mm-hmm. uh, the last show was amazing great tag match so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing west coast wrecking crew try and follow that up with dutch and bateman i think the crowd's going to be super super into what they get to see there with that and Bateman, you know, just uh, most recently had a run with Ring of Honor. So it's just really yeah. cool to see him, you know, come back here. You and, and I always is a uh, six man. Uh, one of one of the people that had the, the six man title with him. OK, awesome. And yeah, last time we saw Bateman was an APW show a few years ago. So it's cool to see him back up here now that things are open. Him uh, uh, making a return up here. And uh, last but not least, uh, the conglomerate taking out Reno Scum. And as you said, fellow Reno native Carl Fredericks. But Carl Fredericks has been tearing up with New Japan Pro Wrestling, New Japan Strong. Uh, the conglomerate, which I was, it's cool. It's like it's our Bay Area faction, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, our Bay Area boys who've been uh, um, getting some momentum and working just a lot of the promotions here in Northern California. So it's cool that they become a team. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited to see see this matchup here. Yeah, I, I am as well. Like the conglomerate have have gelled together really nicely. They have a cool little feud going with uh, 440. Mm-hmm. Uh, that span not just West Coast, but into Circle Six. And I, I fully expect uh, that to make a return at some point, which was cool because they are the Bay Area guys taking on these Cleveland guys. So <laughs> once again, they get to rep the Bay taking on Reno. Uh, and so that, that'll be kind of an interesting I'm, – I, I'm – Wondering how the fans are going to sort of react to that because they do love the Reno scum. They do love Carl Fredericks. One of my favorite things in West Coast Pro's return was Carl Fredericks personal return to the Bay Area after Mm -hmm. several years, you know, and the reception and the response that he got. I I know personally meant a great deal to him and it was Mm -hmm. just so cool to be there for that. But they are repping Reno here. Uh, and the conglomerates rep in the Bay. So it'll be interesting to see the reception for both teams. And, you know, to D Rogue, Alpha Zoe, and Midas Creed, to their credit, you know, they've been working their ass off and, and, you know, working all these promotions. And so, um, it's cool. Like, they're getting momentum on a they regular basis. They really gel together nicely too. Like they 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 fit well together in the ring, and they each bring something different that's really cool. Uh, so I, I definitely have enjoyed seeing the conglomerate, you know, together uh, over these last few shows, and and really sort of build that team chemistry. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a, a super fun match. I mean, Scum and Fredericks. It just it makes total sense. Uh, going to be a lot of fun. I, I think there there might be some divided allegiances in, in, <laughs> from from the fans and everything like that. But it's it's going to be a ton of fun. Well, I, I what's well, the thing? Well, Reno Scum and Carl Fred used to have a lot of history with APW as well. So we've yeah. been seeing them for years wrestle here. So even though yeah they're the enemy from Reno for this match per se, but yeah we've been seeing them for so many years. So Absolutely. it's uh, yeah the crowd reaction for this match that's going to be interesting just because it's like. Everyone in that match we love, but you know, you know, for this match personally or for you know, for individually, this match just you know, got to pick a side, Bay Area or Reno. So it's uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a ton of fun. And w- one more time, I will shamelessly plug West Coast Pro Wrestling. Ill mannered, it is sold out. So you can catch the stream on IWTV. So go to independentwrestling.tv, subscribe, watch. We will be live. It'll be myself and Veda Scott calling the action. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's going to be an, inc- an incredible night of professional wrestling. I can't, I can't wait to see everyone out there. And, and I hope you enjoy what you see and what you hear on, on the call. And, and that's the thing, too. You know, just because, you know, this show sold out and you can't make it in person, like you said, watch it online. But 
with that being said, moving forward, there's there's already announced a couple more shows over the coming months. So make it a point if you're in the area, get your tickets early, get in, uh, get uh, get be be prepared, get your tickets and show up to these shows. So that's what's cool for me. It's like. You know, use this as a promotion as far as, you know, there's a lot more West Coast pro wrestling shows coming up in the works. Uh, they have a show once a month. And well, I think it's kind of cool. They've been announcing stuff in a he- uh, ahead. So now you're kind of know like, OK, there's going to be a show in June. There's going to be a show in July. And the July show is going to be a big one. Right. They're like going to be switching venues in San Francisco. Right. That's right. Yeah. They're going to be in my old neighborhood in the, in the sunset of, <laughs> of San Francisco. So I'm I'm excited for that. I mean. Also, West Coast Pro Wrestling teaming up with Pro Wrestling Revolution with King of Indies yep. that was announced. Uh, I mean, the sort of the Bay Area Pro Wrestling renaissance, it, it's back. Like, and it is it is the place to be right now. And, and West Coast Pro Wrestling is, you know, sort of as responsible for that as, as anybody. And that's why I, I, I mean it when I say it's it's really cool and really humbling to be a small part of that and to mm-hmm. A part of the soundtrack of professional wrestling is always something I take very seriously. Uh, and, and I love doing it for West Coast, like Scott, Vinny, Levi, like those guys are great. Um, and I'll, I'll do it for as long as they let me. And, you know, sh- uh, shamelessly, you know, the King of Indy show, November 19th. So five days after my birthday. So yeah, uh, I'd make the birthday yeah. celebration continue. King of Hueys. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing. Also, like I said, I know this show sold out, but make it a point to come out to future West Coast Pro Wrestling shows. A lot of fun. And you know me, I, I think I've told you this, Jimbo, privately, but what I like about West Coast Pro Wrestling shows, it's like kind of the same people who come every time. So it's like, you know, it's like uh, you're guaranteed family. once. But yeah, family. It's very much like I compare it to like supporting the local music scene, supporting the local independent wrestling scene. You know, you see like same faces over and over. You reconnect with people. So I see a lot of similarities how the fans and the you know family and friends of these shows are very similar to like the local music scene. So it's just cool to come out and support like you would support your favorite local band, support your favorite local wrestler. And so yeah, definitely get there early, check out the merch table, you know, meet the wrestlers, get some yeah, merch. Come, come say hi, uh, interact with us, uh interact on on social media as well. Let us know what you think. I I, I love love that. If you come to the show, uh, and you were so inclined. I'd love it if you if you got on IWTV and watched the the replay afterward as well. I know a lot of people that do that, and um, yeah, it's it is a great time, and it is this family atmosphere, and yeah, just big things are happening at West Coast, and people mm-hmm. are taking notice of West Coast pro wrestling, and it's just it's awesome to see, and it's been a lot of hard work from Scott and everyone involved, but it is it is definitely paying off. And anyway, I think it's cool. You also can get food on site as well. Yeah. <laughs> And we're very proud of, of the of the food offering. So yeah, keep keep your eyes on Twitter for you know what what will be what will be offered at, at the next West Coast Pro Wrestling show for sure. Awesome. Well, I mean, you know, we can go on and on talking about this and our love for West Coast Pro Wrestling, but I think you know this is the beginning. Let's make this a monthly thing, right, Jimbo? Is that okay? I'm, well, I'm down, man. Okay. We'll do this. Every month we'll preview West Coast Pro Wrestling and uh I want to get you on with Brian Tronic and like you know, get your thoughts on the current of state of pro wrestling with WWE, AEW, all that stuff. Let's yeah. <laughs> so, so God help us. I, I know. So uh but yeah, I encourage everyone, yeah, follow West Coast Pro Wrestling on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You get updates there when tickets go on sale, match announcements talent that's coming in all that stuff it's very important to follow that uh i'll put the links as well in the description of this episode uh but yeah no follow along it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah we'll be out there uh yeah go uh uh definitely watch it on tv and you stream it by all means take clips tag jimbo on twitter (laughs) afterwards for the highlights at at james kincaid on twitter and uh, as we close here i just gotta say remember you're not in the click See ya. I wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, on that note, all right, Jimbo, well, thank you for making an appearance tonight. So on that note, I think uh, I see the door opening. So I see Brian Tronic making his way in right now. So I think let's use this as a segue to get Brian Tronic in. And yeah, let's talk some uh, WrestleMania backlash. Thank you, Jimbo. Oh, look at that. Brian right there is giving a, a high five to Jimbo as they're switching spots right now. Switching seats. They're tagging each other in. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Brian? 
Oh, nothing much, man. You know, just just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I uh, for the clicksters listening. So, yeah, thank you again to Jimbo for uh, carrying this first half of the podcast. Did a full preview of West Coast Pro Wrestling. And like Jimbo said, West Coast Pro Wrestling, ill-mannered show tonight. It's sold out. But doesn't mean, you know, you can still watch it online, independentwrestlingtv.com. And, you know, if anything, use this conversation Jimbo and I just had as a reason to come out to future West Coast Pro Wrestling shows. They already announced two more shows, one in June, one in July. So if you're in the Bay Area and are able to come out to a future show, by all means, come to the next show. It's a lot of fun. Brian, you've been out to West Coast Pro Wrestling shows as well. You know, it's a, it's a fun time out. It is. It most definitely is. It's it's one of those things that's like, OK, you know, this is a good it's also a good environment. It's good wrestling, but it's a very good environment as well. Yeah, that's why I just that, said that that makes a world difference. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Like what I said uh, uh, a few minutes ago with Jimbo, it's like what I like about going to like a West Coast pro wrestling show or just any independent wrestling show here in the Bay Area. It's very much like going to supporting your favorite local band. It's mm-hmm. like supporting the local music scene. It's cool. You go see, say, see the same familiar faces. You make friends there. You start seeing the same people over and over. It's a really cool camaraderie, community building. And we all have that common love for pro wrestling. Right. And and like I said, you support your favorite local wrestlers. It's like supporting your favorite local band. So there's a lot of similarities between the music scene and the wrestling scene that I really dig. You know, you watch them perform you buy their merch you know all, all that stuff so uh like i said come out to a future west coast pro wrestling show and uh so yeah as i mentioned at the top of the show brian for the second half of this podcast we're gonna do a little catch up here i'm sorry for the delay it's uh uh not to sound like a broken record but it's just been very busy you know just with work and uh i had other obligations over the weekend uh, you know, this past weekend was Mother's Day and had some other stuff going on. Brian, I know you're busy. You're getting yeah. ready for your, your third kid, right? Yes. Yes. And that's, getting uh, prepared. what was it? What was it say? Last weekend. Yeah. We had the baby shower. That's right. It was like the last time you and I saw each other. Yep. Which, thank you again for the invite. That was a lot hey, of fun. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. I, I love uh, your brother in law, right? He is. Yes. He's, <laughs> I love you with the dad jokes and like the questions, the trivia. He was he was the highlight of the party for me personally. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He definitely he definitely carried a portion of the baby shower like during its downtime in between games. He definitely carried it. He did better than me. I, I you know, me and my my other two sons tried and then, you know, it was a tough crowd. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Like you said, it was really cool uh, meeting your family and your friends and all that stuff. So. Yes. I said, no, thank you. I, that that really meant a lot to me to, to come on out there. And it was, yeah, a fun time. And Phil Absolutely. and Brandon as well. So, yes. um, but yeah, man, so lots of to talk about. Like I said, oh, I got to tell you, I'm going to talk to you about Jericho, uh, how that went. Oh, <laughs> um, it um, like fun. It was fun. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I know Jimbo just left. He was there with me. Um Okay, we got to get Jimbo back on. So yes. Jimbo w- would like to make a regular kind of appearance with the podcast as far as, you know, promoting West Coast Pro Wrestling and stuff. So um, I'm trying to think what I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, there's not that much to talk about. It, it was just a fun night out hanging out with Jericho. And mm-hmm. he, you know, uh, okay, I will say this. Fozzie was awesome. Uh, they played Great American Music Hall. They, uh, the, the new album, um, Boombox. Wait, let me double check. <laughs> I want to make sure I get that right. It's, uh, uh, it's the, yeah, Fozzie's new album, Boombox. It's out now. Go get it, stream it, buy it, whatever you want to do. I actually bought the CD with the autographs on there. So I have, uh, Jericho's nice. autograph now. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, 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 but it was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Jericho, the tour manager came up to Jimbo and I after the show and said, don't go anywhere. He wants to see you. So after a few minutes, she brought us downstairs and we hung out for, with Jericho for like almost an hour, like wow. downstairs. And we were just talking, talking about like life and not a lot about wrestling. We were just talking about each other and like what's been going on. Like, you know, it was just amazing. Like this wrestler that Jimbo and I have been huge fans of for what over the last 25 years. Yeah. Like he's just a bud now, a friend. Like he literally was just hanging out. We were talking and it's like That's so, so cool. cool, man. 
every time he comes to the Bay Area now, he, you know, always hits us up and we we, we go out and hang out with him. So it was a lot of fun. But uh, That's really cool. I, like I said, let me um, I guess I want to hold maybe the full story with Jimbo and kind of get his perspective as well. We'll get him on again soon. Okay. Um, and yeah, we could talk about that night. It was just a lot of fun. So thank you to Chris Jericho, the rest of the Fozzie crew for everything for the shout out on stage, all that stuff. It was a lot of fun. So good times. And yeah, go see Fozzie when you can. And Jericho, I said, yeah, hey, I can't wait to see AEW come out. And he says, yeah, well, when we come back out here, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out again. So, you know, good times lined up. So, Sweet. but with that being said, WrestleMania backlash happened this weekend. That's where also I was, you know, it was on mother's day. I was busy with Chris <laughs> Jericho. So yep. I, I didn't watch WrestleMania backlash live. I had to watch it. Uh, it took me a couple nights to get through it. Just with so I didn't much watch going it live on. either. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I, what happened was I actually watched Raw live on Monday, and then was it Tuesday and Wednesday? I was playing catch up, going back in time, watching Backlash. So I already kind of knew everything what happened based right. on the fallout on Monday Night Raw. So for right now, for this particular part of the podcast, what we're gonna do, we'll go through WrestleMania Backlash, go through the car, give our thoughts on the highlights and whatnot. And then we'll also use that as a way to segue and talk about what happened on the following night on Monday Night Raw and the fallout episode. So we'll kind of combine it all into one. I think it would just make it easier at this point. Right. So, uh, but Brian, yeah, I'll start with you. Just, you know, your initial takeaways from uh, this episode or excuse me, uh, this year's edition of WrestleMania Backlash. It was good to me. It was a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Really? Yeah, I feel like it was a 10 out of 10 um, because it was quick. It was I felt like it was um, structured Mm -hmm. appropriately. Um, I I seen some on the Internet say that it felt like just a big version of Monday Night Raw. But (laughs) yeah. And in many ways, you could look at, I mean, you look at the card on paper, it's just like, oh, okay, this is Monday Night Raw, right? But mm-hmm. I always say, while a lot of people talk about how the card doesn't look good or, you know, it's missing a few things, which it was, and we'll get into it. I'll get into mm-hmm. what why I feel that way. But I feel like uh, the matches, yeah, some of them could have been on Raw, but the quality of the matches to me are it was what makes a whole difference. I feel like when it's time for a premium live event, pay per view, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. they 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 give you a different quality of match uh, versus you know watching on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, it, it's I, I get what you're saying. It's really amazing how a match is structured, like on Raw or SmackDown, versus how Raw or how a match is structured and played out on a, a pay-per-view, a premium live event, as mm-hmm. far as maybe the length or the intensity, what yeah. moves sets did they execute and do the finish, all that stuff. It's really fascinating to me. And the you goosebumps. Know, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, I'm not a wrestler. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's maybe kind of a little bit hard for me to explain. Maybe that, yeah, you know, that's something we should do. Maybe get like a wrestler on to kind of explain that, like the differences between a match on, you know, free TV on cable versus a match. Yeah on well you and i growing up pay-per-view but you know right. streaming on peacock now <laughs> but right. like you know the philosophy how it's like i said structure how it's laid out that's like i said really fascinating and and you know that kind of goes what you and i talked about i think one or two episodes ago as far as if i really wanted to like as a test like not watch raw <laughs> or smackdown for like a whole month and just watch from one pay-per-view to the next and just see how much did I really miss, and mm-hmm. and will my you know love for the show be a little bit better? Like I won't feel as burnt out and be like, oh my mm-hmm. god, it's like a mystery going in. And they have all the recap videos, so it'll catch me up on what happened on TV in quick short video clips. <laughs> yeah, so that's something like I, I kind of want to try out. But uh, I'm with you as far as. WrestleMania backlash. I think like most people, I had low expectations going in. Mm -hmm. I felt kind of the build to this show was a little lackluster, Mm -hmm. but they over delivered. And that's really fascinating to me. The WWE at times is known for, you know, these B level pay-per-views. They can sometimes really have bad builds or storylines going in, but they over deliver on the show. Maybe that's just because like my expectation was so low that the show over delivered and, you can make the argument that 
a lot of the rematches that took place here from WrestleMania, the matches here were probably better than WrestleMania. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll go into some of those matches and examples there. But yeah, I, I want to ask you, though, before we get into the, the card, what are your thoughts, though, about WWE as far as the build was, just, like I said, a little bit lackluster? Do you agree? But, and I say that because... <laughs> Actually, anyway, go ahead, give your thoughts first, and then I'll I'll kind of explain where I'm coming from. But I'm kind of what your initial thoughts on like what people were saying, like the the build was not that good. Yeah, I feel like the build. I mean, I agree with that. The build to me could have been better. But then when I think I, I think about it this way, um, with WrestleMania backlash, right? Like I felt like the rematches that they did give us um, from. WrestleMania were the rematches that were supposed to be rematches. Like, okay. you know, uh, uh, like baby, ma- ma- either matches that under delivered at WrestleMania or matches that needed another match to kind of end, you know, the feud, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think the build, I think it's because it's rematches. I think that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people were underwhelmed with this build. And okay. also, I think that they were kind of transitioning. I think, you know, for the weeks building up to WrestleMania Backlash, it was, I mean, they, they almost spent two weeks talking about how big and how good WrestleMania was, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone's coming down from that. But then at the same time, um, they're adding new pieces and people to the, like, like you know, as far as Ciampa getting called up and, yeah. you know, Ali coming back and maybe – at the very tail end of this build uh, to backlash, maybe certain, I know that certain matches that people were wanting and expecting to be on WrestleMania backlash wasn't on WrestleMania backlash. So it's just like, ah, you know, like I feel like during this build, they weren't just focusing on backlash. They were focusing on, you know, you know, backlash and beyond. Right. So like you say, like they were focusing on the build to backlash, but at the same time, or excuse me, WrestleMania backlash, but at the same time, they were, you know, realizing that, okay, we can't just focus on this. We mm-hmm. have to, you know, create new storylines. Yeah, they're not all going to make the pay-per-view, but, you know, we want to be able to I – f- I feel like it's, a, you know, a diverse thing. Like, they want to be versatile. Like, they want to have different storylines going on. They don't want to just focus on – at least that's what I see the directions going yeah. in and maybe why the build was underwhelming because I feel like – but WrestleMania Backlash was just to finish off whatever feuds that had started um, at WrestleMania or leading up to WrestleMania or even at WrestleMania. Royal Rumble. Royal and, Rumble. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the first of, quarter of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Finish that stuff off. And then maybe now you have room for a lot of the feuds that they were that, that they've been getting started you know, the few weeks leading up to WrestleMania backlash. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. You brought that up and I do agree with you saying, I know I that was long winded, but it's, it, yeah. it sounded better in my head. <laughs> well, no, no, it's interesting because I think for a lot of people who think WrestleMania, it's supposed to be like the series or excuse me, season finale mm-hmm. of the storylines going on in WWE. But that's not so much the case anymore because we know WWE is a 365 continuous year round thing a uh, show so you well, know and i think i think even i think even if you if you look at how builds were back then ruthless aggression era you some could even say that wrestlemania was was the season opener yeah some, series pre- season people. premiere season yeah premiere for some people right mm-hmm. so like um i know I, I always go back to this like orton and taker like i know that yeah. they had a really big rivalry that i think even started maybe at WrestleMania, a little before WrestleMania. And then it kept going on all the way Mm -hmm. almost to December, right? So, you know, I love feuds that that go on like that, that start even sometimes before, maybe at WrestleMania or even shortly after and then go all the way. I love feuds like that. Well, that's the thing, too, is like I think some, depending on the story, some stories Mm -hmm. can end at WrestleMania. And then for some, Raw After Mania, that's like the season premiere and it's like launching stuff for the end of spring and early summer. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just fascinating to me. Like this is the second year in a row now that they've gone with the branding WrestleMania backlash. And, you know, I'm kind of... You know, torn on it because I felt <laughs> yeah. like, 
like I because you look at the logo and the presentation of this pay-per-view it really felt like it's like a sequel to Wrestlemania like they really yeah. were capitalizing on the logo the color scheme the color the yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, maybe because I'm thinking you know what they're probably like hey we put so much money into Wrestlemania we're gonna capitalize and really stretch this out for another four weeks the Wrestlemania mm-hmm. brand name attached to this below pay-per-view so mm-hmm. if we can help ele- ele- uh, elevate backlash and make it feel like a bigger deal wrestlemania backlash like i guess that's fine but to me it's just like you know i like wrestlemania being its own isolated thing and just called this backlash backlash has had a long history going back to what the 90s right. uh, some legendary feuds have happened there it was a triple h in was it Batista had some matches there? Or, you know, I mean, I think so. or Rock. Didn't Rock or someone win a, a title at Backlash? I mean, so Backlash has had some history of big yeah. moments. Um, but it's interesting what you said as well, as far as how some matches, you know, on Raw or SmackDown, you know, they, I don't want to say go through the motions, but they exist. But then mm-hmm. on the pay per views, they really step up their game, put on some quote banger matches. Yeah. And, with that being said, it, it's like I, I feel like you know they, you know they do the match at WrestleMania and then they take it over the backlash and kind of keep it going. And as far as with the build goes, listen, you and I have talked about this before. WrestleMania and other big shows for WWE, it's all about the moments. As far as you know, big things happening that they can isolate that video, include that highlight in future video packages about the history of WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal mm-hmm. Rumble, Money in the Bank. You know, WWE very much lives in like a highlight system, if that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> what I'm getting at is. You know, most people remember, like I said, the big moments, but they don't remember the week to week like storylines and the mm-hmm. build. So I don't want to sound like a hypocrite and say, yeah, the, the build for this backlash pay-per-view sucked. But, you know, listen, a month from now, two months from now, six months from now, are people really going to remember the week-to-week shows? They're, right. really gonna, they're really going to remember, um, you know, how great the match between Cody and Seth was, the sequel. Mm-hmm. Ronda and Charlotte put on maybe the match of the night. You know, that mm-hmm. it's like those moments they're going to focus on. They're not going to remember necessarily what happened on SmackDown two weeks prior to that. <laughs> right. We look at <laughs> other examples like Kofi Mania. You know, it was a story of this chase, but the big moment was, yeah, when he beat Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, New Day, lift him up. A very powerful, important moment there. But are people, did people talk about what happened three weeks prior to that on that one random episode of SmackDown? No. Right. So I feel it's a little hypocritical for some fans to say, yeah, the builds suck. And I'm one of them. But I, I will play devil's advocate to my own statement as far as it is frustrating because you and I, you know, we're podcasters. We like to review week to week episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Yep. And so we're investing so much time into this product. We want like every episode to be awesome and worth mm-hmm. the time and effort that we're putting into it. So <clears throat> I will, that's where I come in with this as far as playing the devil's advocate saying, sure, they're all about the moments and we just, and the big thing, as long as the, the pay per views had the big moments that, uh, the big payoff, that's fine. But I think for us as like hardcore fans who watch every week, we want we don't want to be, feel like we're wasting our time. So right. I, so you get on both sides oh, of yeah. the equation here. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So let's go ahead and yeah talk about the the matches here. It was only six matches. The show itself was what like two hours and forty five minutes roughly. Yeah. So it was a quick, easy watch. But on top of that, if you take away like just all the entrances and like the commercials, that <laughs> I mean, the show itself was really short. I mean, yeah. so it definitely was an easy watch. So uh, um, no kickoff matches again. So this is what like the third pay per view in a row. I want to say with no kickoff matches, or I'm I trying to remember so. when the last time was. Was it Royal Rumble or Day One? I'm trying to think when the last time. It might have been Day One. It might have yeah. been Day One. Which you know, I'm and, fine and, and, with. <laughs> And well, and and you know what too? This what 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 stood out for me with WrestleMania Backlash was, um, the like I said, the way it was like constructed, like the the order of the matches, like 
I felt like it was very like it was almost like old school, like Raw versus SmackDown. You know, brand versus like brand. <laughs> one brand goes first. Okay, you 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 have your matches, and then and then SmackDown comes. The Raw goes first, and SmackDown comes. Even with the commentary change. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a good point. I just yes, I that is true. The first half was Raw, and the second half was SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And yeah, halfway through they switch announcers. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a good point. Kind of go with the. I feel like you kind of go with the um, open up with something strong and you close with something strong. Yeah. Have all your you know your stuff in the middle. I don't know. I feel like what what they whatever they did <laughs> for WrestleMania Backlash worked out for them um, in terms of because that's all you saw on the internet too is oh my god you know keep doing this six matches keep doing this uh, uh, I like it I like it but I mean kind of. A lot of people were upset too before WrestleMania Backlash talking about no US title, no Intercontinental title, no tag titles, Raw women's title, Raw women's yeah. title, you know? So you, with only six matches, you kind of have to pick and choose, you know? And, and, and true. And, and, I, and to go along those lines, for me, it's like, yeah, don't uh, horseshoe every title or force certain matches on a pay per view where it's maybe not needed instead use those titles to maybe main event a raw or SmackDown. So to help elevate just the weekly shows, if that makes yeah. sense. I, I, I remember v- still very clearly seven years ago, Jimbo and I were at WrestleMania radio row. We was here in the Bay area. We talked to Dean Ambrose, AKA John Moxley. And we were talking, I think about Brock Lesnar, who was, was he? Yeah. Was he universal? No. It was 2015, so it was before. He was WWE. He was was WWE. WWE yeah, WWE, yeah, WWE champion. Mm-hmm. And you know, big complaint with Brock at the time, part-time champion. And yep. we were asking Dean Ambrose about it. And I remember he said, like, that's why their Continental title or U.S. title should main event a pay-per-view. If there's a show coming up where there's no WWE champion scheduled for the pay-per-view, use that to elevate the mid-card titles in main event pay-per-views or raw or smackdown and so with that being said yeah sure i see title no u.s title on this show let that main event future episodes of raw and smackdown respectively so th- that's yes. my my you know way to and that would give more prestige to those titles and mm-hmm. it's like you know really the the workhorse t- uh title for you know that divisions uh respectively so um but yeah i i'm i'm all for that six matches under yeah. three hours that's fine with me, considering you know we got like you know three hours of Raw every week, two hours of SmackDown, two hours of NXT. Yeah, just make it easier to consume. I'm all for mm-hmm. that. But yeah, so no kickoff matches. The opening match: Cody Rhodes versus Seth freaking Rollins, part two. Man, Brian, I think this match might have been better than the WrestleMania match. And Grant, that WrestleMania match was awesome. We were there in mm-hmm. person for it. I love the energy. I mean. The emotions you and I felt that night, mm-hmm. one of the greatest feelings ever for me as yeah. like watching a live show, a live wrestling yeah. match. I'm so glad we got to experience that in person. No one could ever take that away from us. But just from yeah. a pure wrestling standpoint, this match was awesome too. Just kind of your, yeah. you know, your initial thoughts with it. I liked it better than the WrestleMania match okay. a lot, yeah. just mm-hmm. because I think, you know, all the, you know, we talk about it. After Cody had debuted, you know, when is everything going to wear off? When is the excitement and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the the shiny new toy feeling, new car smell going to wear off? And I kind of feel like it's getting to that point. And at least from WWE's point, while he still remains and is being pushed as someone who's very, very important, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like they're not overdoing it, right? They're not, it's, they're not saying, Cody Rhodes, American Nightmare, American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. He's not being shoved down our throats. Okay, yeah. Even himself, I feel like the way he presents himself on social media and even on TV, it's not like, hey, look at me, guys. I'm back with WWE. It's calmed down a little bit. So this match with Seth, um, I feel like you can concentrate on it more and mm, okay. not be so excited about the – you know, the hype. Cody Rhodes is back. Now it's just like, okay, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, too. But really, one, because this is the real, like, this is a real <laughs> match. This is, because, like, even in Seth's, like, what he says, right? He was, he couldn't caught prepare. off guard. He was yeah. caught off guard, you know? So now it's just like, okay. And then I think 
the unpredictability because we all knew Cody Rose wasn't losing that match at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But this time, it's like, Who's really going to win? Is Cody going to win? Is Seth going to win? What's going to happen? How do they do this? Did they book themselves into a corner? Did they not? <laughs> like, what's going to happen? What's going on? And so, yeah, just when you think you – and I think Cody, I'll give Cody credit. He did this in AEW too. Um, he has a certain aura about him that yeah. makes you happy or that makes you enjoy what he's doing, no matter who he's working with, which – is why I was glad he, I know we'll get into it, he got to work, you know, Austin Theory, or excuse yeah. me, Theory, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> but, you know, this match with Seth Rollins was really good, and, it, you know, even though he his repertoire, his arsenal of offense and defense is sort of the same, like a lot of wrestlers, but he kind of gives me that Cena vibe, which is another <laughs> reason why I think Cody is perfect to be, you know, the babyface champion in uh, WWE. Okay. Right? Okay. And we'll get into more of that too later too. But okay. um I thought the, the the match was really good. Seth Rollins continues to prove why, you know, he's one of the best in the world. Um but in the the finish with the tights. Yeah, that was I mean well, I, co- I see, well, I was just gonna say for me what I liked about this match was Seth was very intense, gaining a lot of offense in. Mm-hmm. Cody, as the baby face, was very resilient and like absorbing the punishment, but not giving up. So it was like <laughs> a really fighting baby face. I enjoy that. And eventually he got his comeback in, he got his spots in. Um, you know, Rollins managed to escape the second straight crossroads. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the swift kick and roll up. And then, uh, uh, Cody, you know, had the handful of tights. And got the win, one, two, three. So, you know, the deadliest move ever in WWE is a quick <laughs> roll up. So, um, so Cody wins. He's two and zero. Oh. Um, I mean, I guess I'm cool with that that finish because mm-hmm. it does lead to like a third match, you know, between yeah. everyone. A bit, but yeah, your thoughts? Were you okay with that finish? Yeah, at first I was caught off guard, but then when you think about it and, you know, you think about a possible third match, just like, okay, like, I'm cool with it. Um, I'm not going to overthink it, especially if we're getting a third match. Um, It's okay. If we're getting a third match, it's okay. And I think this even builds more anticipation and more, like, room for arguing and thoughts and rumor, like, Okay, what's going to happen in the third match now? Is Seth finally going to get that win? So, okay, so with that being said, so like I said, we're going to combine Backlash and the Fallout on Raw. So on Raw, Monday afternoon, they announced Cody versus Theory for the U.S. title. I was like, what? It's kind of unannounced. I mean, I'm excited for the matchup, but yeah. I feel like both guys are in a position right now. They, they can't lose because they both mm-hmm. got momentum going. Mm-hmm. Um and I think you tweeted out like this smells like an obvious Seth Rollins DQ or interference. Mm-hmm. The match was great. It was fun to watch yeah. on Raw this week. But sure enough, Seth Rollins comes in at the very end, attacks Cody Rhodes. So Cody Rhodes wins by DQ. Theory still U.S. champion. Seth Rollins beats him down. So it looks like the feud's not over, even though Cody's two and zero. Yep. It looks like it's still going to set up a third match. Um, yeah, get your thoughts on this whole thing. But also, do you think the third match is deserves to be in a Hell in a Cell match That since that is the next pay-per-view? So um, the interference when it happened, I liked it because it happened at the time that it happened, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm glad that they gave this match some time, gave it at least me uh, sort of that feeling like, oh, maybe – Maybe Cody will become the United States champion tonight, you know? <laughs> like, maybe it will happen. Um, so I, I'm, I was okay with the finish. Um, a potential Hell in a Cell match at Hell in a Cell. I initially said, yeah, you know, I'm cool with it. Let's go. But then when I got started, when I started to think about it, um, and then every a lot of people on Twitter were kind of giving me feedback on what they thought in regards to, the possible hell in a cell match. And one person said, um, what about a two out of three falls? And I got to Uh. think like, you know, a two out of three falls wouldn't like, it wouldn't be bad, especially when you think about Seth Rollins, he's already lost twice. Maybe Seth Rollins can come from a, from a, like, Hey, 
you can't you may have beat me twice but you can't beat me twice in one night like there's mm, no way you can beat me twice okay. in one night and then okay. it kind of gives seth if seth does if he's in that position to win which i don't know how more i don't know how people would feel about that but you could look at it both ways if seth ends up winning that match he can get his two wins back over cody okay now we're even right okay but also if cody wins it makes cody look even that much stronger because now he's beaten him four times twice two different occasions and twice in one night give him the championship match already <laughs> gotcha yeah no i hear, I hear you well i I do want to talk some more Cody at the end in regards to Roman Reigns. So we'll get into that in a second. Um, But yeah, like I said, I I'm, I mean, I'm looking at like just all the match or feuds going on WWE, Mm. maybe outside the tag titles and maybe a women's match. I think Cody and Seth is probably the best option for hell in the cell. You know, they're going to probably do two hell in the cell matches Mm -hmm. next month. Probably one at the beginning of the show, one to end the show. So I can see Cody and Seth be one of those matches there. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes and how it continues over the next couple of weeks on Monday Night Raw. I mean, they're definitely Seth is just really upset with Cody that he's lost <laughs> twice and probably just determined to get one win over him at some point. So Hell in the Cell could be a nice spot for them to finally settle this feud. Right. And I can see Cody winning that and just be 3-0, and even though he's already won two. There, we've seen plenty of times match or uh, uh, rivalries go like three matches and one person wins all three. We've seen that before. So, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I could see Cody just beat him one more time and then maintains his momentum for that future WWE championship match. So uh, next up on the card was Bobby Lashley taking on Omos with MVP in his corner. Now this match, like if I had to predict you know, we, we didn't chance to do predictions before this pay per view, but I had a feeling Omos was going to win this one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Bobby Lashley's a baby face now; he's by himself. I, while he's not the best in ring promo, I like the video packages they do better behind the scenes, like pre pre film. I think yeah. he's more comfortable there, and so mm-hmm. like on Raw, like those backstage videos, I think are better for him. Um, yeah. What do you think of Bobby Lashley's like? intro now our entrance he's standing on like some people say it looks like he's the top of a, a cake <laughs> and it's got he, a does, bit... <laughs> he definitely does look like he's on top of it. you said it had, it had uh what were you gonna say no i was gonna say yeah he's on top of the cake but a little bit of a different intro the music is a little bit different too right oh, yeah like the different sound effect um before it goes into burr, 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 you yeah. know, his, his main music but a little bit of a different right. intro it's, it's a baby face entrance he has now but he looks like a million bucks on like on top of a cake yeah. <laughs> at top of the ramp there but I, uh yeah i feel like the entrance is cool i just wish that the cameras wouldn't get the platform that he's standing on oh like <laughs> it's just yeah. it's almost like that's i'm glad they got rid of the the platform the cody vader yeah. thing that that cody was using in wwe yeah. because it just doesn't look right um, you know the way that they were shooting it was just kind of weird. So like, yeah, I th- that's actually really interesting. The top of a cake. He does look like the top of a cake. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, On that platform, and it's kind of like I mean with Bobby Roode, right? When he had his platform, mm-hmm. they never showed mm-hmm. the platform, and I don't know if it's just because he had the robe that covered it. Um, but it just—I it, don't know. It, fe- it felt we- it felt different. Like it mm-hmm. felt like he was floating, and then when he finally stepped off it was like cool but now with bobby lashley it's just like they're panning up and they're showing the the little cake topper in the background i don't know it just looks weird uh yeah no it's, i mean like the match itself was fine I, yeah. you could say it was a little bit better than wrestlemania's match their match they had together but you know i, I bobby lashley here you know was doing his best just to beat down omas omas is selling is still questionable he's still very green in the ring yeah, it, yeah. it's I, for me, I, I'm, I'm concerned. It's like, where's Omos going to be six months from now? Yeah. Like outside of this Bobby Lashley feud, like where what's his ceiling with WWE? Like where can he go from here? Um, you know, I think having MVP with him as his mouthpiece, great choice. Come to find out now with reports that Malcolm Bivens originally was going to be his mouthpiece, but he turned that down. Um, and now we know he's no longer with NXT, but 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious with that. So, you know, Bobby getting the loss here, um, you know, hopefully wouldn't hurt him too much. Um, but we saw, you know, MVP interfered, hit him with the hit Bobby Lashley with the cane. Um, and, and, you know, uh, after that, uh, Omos, you know, after he got hit with the cane, Omos picked up Bobby Lashley and planted him, uh, to the ground for a pinfall. So, you know, Bobby looks okay in defeat here because, you know, it took two guys to take him out. And then we saw on Raw, you know, Omos and MVP were celebrating the VIP lounge. Bobby Lashley comes running in. Cedric Alexander comes in to help, which, like, is Cedric Alexander trying to realign himself with MVP and, and now Omos? Right. Uh, but Bobby Lashley, you know, took out Omos and then took out uh, Cedric Alexander with the, the hurt lock. So, I'm guessing they're probably gonna have one more match at some point here, but I I, I imagine Bobby Lashley is gonna win the next one, and then you can argue Bobby Lashley could also maybe be a, a future WWE champion at some, or a, a number one contender. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, anything else for you that stood out for this one? Omos has new teeth. Yes, dude. Really? He has new front like top teeth like they're they're brand new and i noticed it as soon as i saw the match and i gotta try to look i I, I thought it looked looked good on them yeah i'm looking at the photo right now on the website (laughs) okay okay you know i don't know and it made me think i was i wonder if that was like a um like a, a you know events thing or if that was personal thing for him you know um I don't know, but it, it, it it's noticeable and it looks great on him. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it, look at Roman Reigns. He invested in his look as yep. far as getting mm-hmm. new teeth, got a little mm-hmm. bit of a, a nose job. And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, I'm all for it. If it you know, makes you feel better, look more presentable, however, yeah. for your career, fine. By all means, yeah. as long as you're happy, that's good. Yeah, um, so yeah, we'll see how this plays out. What's next for them? I, I, I think... Like I said, Omos, I'm just like I said, long term, what is his ceiling with WWE and where can he go? So I don't know. We'll be curious. Um, like I said, I, I hope he doesn't have a short shelf life, which that case, I'm a little worried for like MVP because that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to see him leave Bobby Lashley. Because if Omos has a short life, a shelf life as a, you know, legit competitor in the ring or believable competitor bobby lashley's the better person to stay with so yeah i don't know we'll, we'll see like i say we'll see how it goes and we can always come back to that to this scenario um next up aj styles taking on edge um as we saw in the previous episode of raw edge beat um or uh, excuse me uh 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 damian priest lost so he was banned from ringside and so yeah it was aj styles taking on edge um this match I definitely thought was better than the WrestleMania match. I think the WrestleMania yeah. match was a little slow, a little to to quote methodical. Mm-hmm. I think at times people might think that's a little too slow, a little boring. This one, I thought the pacing was much better. I thought yeah. Edge definitely came off better in this match. I don't know about you, your thoughts on this, but like I think also with Damian Priest banned ringside, a lot of people were thinking, okay, just because he's banned. All right, this could give an opportunity for someone else to interfere, and then that person who does interfere could be a new member of Judgment Day. Or excuse me, now it's the Judgment Day, which is now the official name of Edge's new faction here. Yeah. Um, come to find out, that did come true. A new member. A lot of people thought, like, you know, is it going to be Rhea Ripley? Is it going to be Finn Balor turning on AJ? Mm-hmm. Uh, could have been Tommaso Ciampa, but you know, we see Ciampa is kind of busy already with Mustafa Ali and the Miz storyline right now. Um, but sure enough, uh, uh, AJ was on the ropes. Uh, we see this person in a hooded black outfit come out, push him off the ropes. Uh, Edge was able to counter and pick up the victory, and then the person revealed themselves. It was Rhea Ripley, dyed mm. black hair. Yep. Official member of Judgment Day, man. How, your thoughts on how this all uh, uh, finished out? I like it, and I agree with you in regards to the match. It was, the pace was up just a tad bit and made it that much better. Edge, um, the facial expressions, you know, the little things, the little things that he did in this match 
um, made a difference to me. So I was happy with it. Um, Rip, Rip Ripley, you know, interfering, joining the Judgment Day. I, you know, I was kind of waiting on it. You know, um, mm-hmm. I didn't know if it was going to happen here, but obviously with the rumors and everything going around, like you kind of know, okay, Rhea Ripley, you know, everything that's been going on in weeks prior with the purple lighting and her breaking up with Liv mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, you know, but it, she, she's much, she seems much more comfortable in a role in a setting like this. Mm-hmm. There's just some wrestlers who aren't meant to be good guys, you know, like, yeah. I think Rhea Ripley is a natural bad guy. Like she is like, she's <laughs> natural at it. Um, she looks, and even, even the, just the looks that she gave the camera uh, with the reveal, like it just, it's, it's scary. Like it makes you go, <laughs> Oh, like <laughs> she's serious, you know? And um, I'm happy for her. I'm happy that they got her doing something and something that where people feel like she's uh, appreciated and being utilized. Right. Cause I know for a minute, everyone was like, Oh, they're using her wrong, you know, stuff like that. So, um, she fits well with Edge. Yeah, who wouldn't no, want to be with Edge? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm very happy. Um, my only thing was like I was kind of like with Rhea, you know. Listen, like I said, I didn't watch it live, but I saw on Instagram mm-hmm. and social media that she, you know, j- aligned himself. So it was already kind of spoiled spoiled for me when I watched it um uh, mm-hmm. later. Yeah. But watching it though. I wish they would have kind of changed her outfit a little bit. Like, yeah. you saw the hoodie, you know, the mask and the hood over her, uh, but you still saw her pants. It was it was her regular ring gear pants. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it didn't. It wasn't rocket scientists to know who it was. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, <laughs> like I know it was Rhea Ripley, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it's cool. She dyed her hair black, uh, aligned herself. So it was a cool visual of Edge. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, her with her arms up together um, and then Damian Priest as well. Also, you know, quick shout out the previous episode of Raw. It was cool seeing Finn Balor come to AJ's aid. And so you got the first two leaders of the Bullet Club coming together to sweeten each other. That was a cool moment. Yep. And, you know, for right now, Finn still a baby face. A lot of people think he might turn on him and join Judgment Day. I don't know if that's the right move for Finn. Mm-mm. But, uh it was cool. He came out to his aid here. Um, so I, I'm kind of cool seeing them align with each other for a bit. Maybe they can be somewhat of a tag team for a while. Uh, yep. But for Raw itself, you know, Edge comes out, purple suit, got a haircut, which is like, all right, cool. We have not seen short hair Edge. The only time we saw that was when he was retired. Retired, yeah. <laughs> so it's the first time we're seeing him as a competitor with short hair, which I'm digging. I'm like, it's cool. And yeah. I like how, you know, he has, you know, the, the purple outfit, um, you know, kind of like a cult leader, if you want to call it that, you know, just or mm-hmm. uh, like a uh, religious figure. Uh, um, what's the term? You know, that the, those type of people who like the yeah. whole court and stuff. Um, so they come out. He cuts a promo. Rhea Ripley explains herself. So what do you think of Rhea's explanation of why she joined Judgment Day, the Judgment Day? She says she was tired of the fans and asking for autographs at the airport and selling it on eBay. I don't know. What did you think of that explanation? It was good, but I felt like she missed she missed one more thing. I think she should have mentioned the tag teams. Oh, I yeah. mean, she she had yeah. been mentioning it. She'd been mentioning it on social media and in promos and how, you know, Liv held her down and being in tactic. But that's a big, that's a big part of why you should feel frustrated. Yeah, no, I, I'm know? with you. Like I, how many times we've seen someone turn heel and they blame it on the fans, you people, this mm-hmm. or that X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. It's such a tired motivation, but yeah, I'm with you. Cause like, remember edge, like the reason he kind of went down this dark path was he wanted to match WrestleMania. He was desperate Mm -hmm. and he was frustrated that he was trying to be the ultimate baby face, but it didn't get him anywhere. He just ended up losing. So he kind of went down like it's like in star Wars, went down the dark path thinking that's a better solution for their problems. So for Rhea Ripley, that could have been similar motivation. She could have said, listen, I was a former raw women's champion. I lost it. I was a tag champion. I lost it. I haven't, I I've, I've lost my ways. And she realized 
Edge has sim- has gone through a similar path, and therefore I feel the reason to join him. Like to me, that seems like a more believable motivation there. But no, yeah. it's just she's tired of fans. <laughs> and I feel I feel like I feel like Edge did a little better with explaining, or at least like hyping her up to to you know for people to understand. Like you know she's like look, this is like look at her, look look who she is. You know, like mm-hmm. I think he did a lot better with hyping her up and making her like putting her over basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but you know, hearing from Rhea Ripley for the first time after it, it sounded like um, she was trying her best to say what she was supposed to, what she was told to say. Yeah. Um, and not what, like she didn't flip it and make it into her own. I think that's what missed. And mm. thankfully she's with edge because had she'd been by herself and tried to do that, it probably wouldn't have gone over well, especially with the crowds nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, good point. Good point. And, you know, I think it's going to be cool. Like him, Damian Priest and her, like their three, three person group, which I think it's cool. And it's been a while since they have like an intergender mm-hmm. faction, which I think is also awesome. And that's and, they're not done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can easily see them adding one more member. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this could be like their answer to the bloodline as far as like a f- dominant faction for Raw. But yeah. I think it'd be cool down the road that, you know, maybe Edge, this could lead to him being like a number one contender for a title shot. Damian Priest, and if they add like a, another male, mm-hmm. those two can go after the tag titles. And Rhea Ripley, I think this is great for her because this sets up, I think, a future heel opponent for Bianca Belair. Mm-hmm. And I can see this maybe being a future SummerSlam type matchup. Oh, yeah. Once Bianca gets done with. Uh, it looks like she's kind of inserting herself into the Becky Oscar storyline, mm-hmm. which that could be a whole nother debate of if that's the right thing to do or not. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like Bianca is the cha- raw champion. She should be the number one focal point, but Becky and Oscar are getting more attention for the women's division, which I'm, I'm happy for. I like seeing a non title storyline for the women's division. They need yeah. that. They need more of that. You don't need a title in order to feature women on the program. Exactly. But nonetheless, but it's like, Oz, or excuse me, Bianca is like adding herself. So I guess it's going to be maybe potentially a triple threat at Hell in a Cell. Maybe. I don't see yeah. how that goes. But yeah, so we saw Rhea on Raw just dominate Liv Morgan, her former most recent tag partner. So, yes, just good. Hey, you got to establish her as this new monster character. I'm all for it. I think it could be the summer of Rhea Ripley, the like mm-hmm. rebirth of Rhea Ripley. I'm all for that. So yep. I'm, I'm I'm digging Judgment Day, or excuse me, the Judgment Day. They had the the now. Yes. Um, and also shout out for the poster, the Edge re- reenactment or recreation of uh, the backlash from like what 15 years, wherever how long ago it was. Oh man, yeah, that was good. It was like a, the, uh, a play on. Um, Jack Nicholson. Uh, here's Johnny from uh, The Shining. Is it The Shining? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. For, oh, yes, The Shining. Yeah, yes, yes. Jack Nicholson. So, uh, all right. Next up on the show. All right. I'm sorry, Brian. We have to talk about this match here. Uh, <laughs> for the SmackDown Women's Championship, your girl, Charlotte Flair, taking on Ronda Rousey. Now, I say I'm sorry because, you know, first off, it's an I quit match. But unfortunately, you know, as we all know, Charlotte Flair lost the title. Ah. But silver lining, it, you could argue maybe it was match of the night. Your yeah. thoughts on it. So I thought that this and I was I was watching it late <laughs> and I wish I had been watching this live just so that <laughs> I could throw it in the faces of people who said that this build was which it was. The build was not good at all. Correct. But. That doesn't always mean that the match isn't going to be good. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I just I want to give all the love and credit to Charlotte and even Rhonda. They really tried their best. Yes. Charlotte. Charlotte's going to give 110 percent. I already know that. Queen City, of course. Okay, the greatest women's wrestler, maybe even wrestler. Okay, in the world. Like she's that good. Yeah. (laughs) But but Ronda Rousey. She is really out there trying really hard. She's not the best talker. She's yeah. not even the best wrestler. But she's really taking punishment. She's taking she's taking it. Um, 
She's giving it, and this match was really, 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 really good as far as what, you know, the expectations weren't very high at all. Um, They really make me feel like they hate each other. Like, I think back to when this feud, before this whole feud started and the reports came out that Charlotte had requested to work with Ronda, right? Oh, okay. When you see them fight, like, I always think back to reading that report and going, what? I, she hates her. Like, why? <laughs> you know, like they don't like each. You would, you know, kind of like what with, with what happened with Charlotte and Nia. Like after that yeah. whole scuffle, they were like, "Oh my god, they hate each other!" Right? <laughs> and so, like some of the some of the the offense in this match really made me think, like, "Yo, like, are they mad at each other? Like, is this a person? Like, because you never know. One could be mad at the other for the lack, or yeah. the, you know, this you know for not delivering on their end with this build and just." Maybe the matches and stuff. I don't know, but it's well, bittersweet. Yes, I mean, so the match itself was awesome. I give them credit; they went all over the arena, up in yeah. the aisles, the stairs. You know, callback with Charlotte and Sasha when Ronda got put through the railings <laughs> in, the, in the aisle way. There, uh, I love the kendo sticks being brought out. You know, call back to their Survivor Series match down in L.A. at Staples Center, or excuse me, Crypto. What's a Crypto? Arena now. Arena. <laughs> Dude, you hear all those cryptocurrency <laughs> issues now, man. Crypto might be ending Ooh. as a thing. So yeah. anyway, uh, which I was there in person for that Ronda Charlotte match at Survivor Series. That was wow. so intense in person to watch. But um, I love Charlotte took the camera, the video camera, and threw it at Ronda. I was like, what? Yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, so, but the match itself, like I said, just these ladies laid it all out there going at back and forth and um you know the finish was interesting like i i i i kind of really dug how that played out as far as um you know they were going back and forth the ref was like sticking the mic in their face and they kept saying i don't no i don't give up screaming no i don't give up bitch all this and that yeah. i was i wonder if we were going to get like a mick foley the rock <laughs> i quit match scenario where we're like you know they're going to take a recording i was kind of hoping it was that was yeah. going to happen no uh <laughs> did not happen that way um uh so uh you know at towards the end we saw charlotte set up the chair for uh, a move uh but she paused to wish rousey a happy mother's day which got Ronda Rousey pissed off. She grabbed Charlotte's arm through the chair and put in an arm bar and, uh, you know, really synced it in. And Charlotte started screaming, I quit, I quit, I quit. So I thought it was a really cool creative finish there. Yeah. Uh, so Ronda Rousey is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. A uh, couple things. So looks like reports are Charlotte is taking some time. I mean, they, they reported she had an injury, like a broken arm, more or less. Right. That, you know, WWE has their own language for injuries but yep. pretty much as uh 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 they someone says broken arm but like real talk she's uh looks like be taking some time off she's actually finally getting married to andrade right is that the word yep that's that's right so finally ronda he finally <laughs> so <laughs> um you know we're recording i remember this- whenever I remember when everyone thought that they were uh, not together because they weren't posting each other on their socials at one point. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. They're not together anymore. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're recording this before the fallout on SmackDown this week. I'm kind of curious, though, what's next for Ronda Rousey opponent wise? Like the maybe the number one contender would have been like from a name recognition, Sasha Banks. But she's busy with the women's tag title scene. Mm hmm. I'm trying to think who else, like Lacey Evans, but she's now like, you know, they're building her up as like these vignettes as like a baby face with her return to SmackDown. But now this week on Raw, we saw the vignette aired on Raw now, but then was it PW Insiders reporting? Internal reports are saying that Lacey Evans has been switched over to Raw and she's been booked as a heel or being viewed as a heel, which kind of makes sense because the Easter egg last Friday the announcer said, show Lacey Evans some respect, which is an old, you know, statement. Heels would say, like, addressing the crowds, like, you show me some respect. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what do you do for Ronda on SmackDown? Like, I don't know who who could be an opponent. I mean, the, the, the roster seems really thin for the women's division on SmackDown. So I'm trying to think, like, who can it be? Um, I mean, you got, let's see. 
I mean, really, yeah, think about it. That's the oh, thing. It's kind of crazy. Like, Sasha, Naomi, I mean, Zia Lee, you got Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Natty, Shayna, but they're kind of busy with the tag title scene right now. Right. Shotzi. Um, am I missing someone? I'm probably missing someone right now. But as far as a baby face, I mean, at this point, Bailey, when she comes back, she has to be on SmackDown. I would imagine has to be a baby face. So where is... You know, Hmm? I was gonna say, where's where's Io Shirai? She's still in NXT. I don't. Or, she hasn't been back since. Yeah, since they they uh, they lost the was it stand deliver. So yeah, I don't know, man. I so I, that's my only concern with Ronda Rousey. It's like now that she's champion, what do you do with her next? So that's my Raquel. Only, oh yeah, Raquel. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, man. So. Food for thought, you know, moving forward on SmackDown. So we'll see how it all goes on SmackDown moving forward. Uh, all right, we got two more quick matches here. Uh, Mad Cat Moss taking on Happy Corbin. Um, you know, for a short match, I thought it was pretty physical. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I feel like a match like this is good. It, ma- it makes me, again, feel like like an old school, like you watch an old school WWF pay-per-view. They had these <laughs> matches where, you know, it didn't involve anyone at the top or anyone that had any titles. It was just like, it reminds me of Steve Blackman versus Hardcore Holly. Something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What it, that, that's what it felt like. Or someone like Mad Cat Moss who, you know, they're trying to get over and 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 Corbin is in a position, I think, now where, He's kind of like they're they go to him to put over ba- a baby face, you know. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I, th- I feel like that's what they're they're using this feud for is to kind of get Madcap over as a baby face. You know, we Corbin, we all know what Corbin can do. He's been doing mm-hmm. it for a while now on the main mm-hmm. roster. So, mm-hmm. and I think it, and I think it's worked. I think people. I mean, I seen someone on Twitter say. Now change his name back to Riddick Moss. You know, when they say Mm -hmm. that, when people start saying that, it means they like what they're seeing. And, you know, it's cool. He needs, yeah, and yeah, go back to Riddick Moss, drop the suspenders. He's wearing a belt. Why are you wearing suspenders (laughs) when you got a belt on? And then, yeah, put him. um, (laughs) Yeah, he's got, he has to drop the annoying, goofy gimmick look. He's yeah, gotta drop it be now. a little more serious, please. <laughs> yeah. But the match, like I say, was short. I mean, good placement here. Yeah, I know it's late in the show, but it was good because, you know, after that Charlotte Ronda match, needed a little time to breathe for the audience to collect themselves before the main event. So, yeah, Mad Cop, Mad Cat Mouse picked up the victory there. So good for him. We'll see what's next for 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 each guy moving forward. Uh, main event time, Bloodline taking on uh, uh, RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. But they're calling it what? Uh, RK, wait, R McBro, R McBro, R McBro, R K McBro, I think, R McBro, <laughs> yeah. R, wait, R K McBro, R K McBro, R K McBro, yeah, R K McBro. <laughs> so I'm liking that. That's a good name. So, <laughs> but man, this okay, you know, it, going into backlash, it was supposed to be tag title unification, Bloodline versus R K Bro. Then last week they changed that. They dropped it. Roman Reigns came out, ripped up the contract, stuck it in <laughs> in Riddle's mouth, and it became a three on three match. Well, your thoughts on just that stipulation being taken away? Um, confusing, right? Like very confused. I felt like if you wanted to get excitement, or because I I read reports that this this was going to be like it was the way it played out was supposed to be like Meltzer, this anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, which I kind of, I'm like, I don't know whether to believe that or not, but, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, if you weren't going to do the championship match, um, then don't make it a unification match. You know, it could have been, you know, a personal, who's the better tag team. And then you add in McIntyre and Roman, obviously. I mean, now I'm even more confused now because, you know, as we're, as we're recording this, you know, before SmackDown, RK bro showing up to they said they still want to unify the championship. So I'm confused. <laughs> so that's the thing. Yeah, they showed up on. So RK bro comes out on Raw this week. Okay, so Bloodline defeats 
Drew McIntyre, RK Bro. It was a very fun match, but like literally, it could have been a match that made it into Raw or SmackDown. It was yeah. fun to watch. The crowd was into it. Everyone trading moves and finishers. Randy Orton hit RK, RKO on, on Roman Reigns. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ultimately, you know, with the finish, though, we saw, um, uh, uh, I mean, God, it was like all the stuff I'm trying to think, like seeing Roman spear <laughs> riddle. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. Like Roman kept teasing. He was going to come in, but I love really that <laughs> taunting um, riddle was taking a beating the majority of the match. And we know Randy Orton gets the hot tag, but even here anticipation for drew getting in with the hot tag was also very much up there. Uh, drew finally comes in. I like seeing Roman put Drew through the table. That was a cool spot. Uh, but ultimately, you know, at the end um, riddle caught Jay with an RKO off the top rope awesome yep. and uh but when he did that he didn't see reigns tag uh uh jay on the leg who then ran in and you know hit riddle with a spear and got the victory for the bloodline but the match was, it was super fun um there's a lot to unpack here though so yeah we see rk bro come out on raw and said they still want to challenge the usos for a tag unification i'm guessing i'm trying to understand the situation here as far as I wonder, okay, uh, I'm trying to think how I want to go with this because okay, we saw before the pay per view, Roman cut that promo in New Jersey saying like he's entering a new phase of his career and he's not going to be around as much and he wants to thank the fans. A lot of people were speculating he can go to Hollywood, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. No reports came out he re-signed with WWE, but uh, he's going to be working. Um, uh, less dates for WWE. He's going to yep. be uh, like less house shows, yep. all that stuff. Is that right for the reports? Yep. Mm-hmm. Less house show dates. Um, it said that he'll still be at the pay per views and yeah. you know the occasional Raw and SmackDowns and stuff. But um, yeah, less house show dates. Which yeah, which which would which would make sense as to why he would say something like that at the small town in New Jersey that they were in. So yeah, yeah, and also he's earned it. God, he's mm-hmm. been around for how long? It's like you know, he's getting older. He is mm-hmm. the champion. You know, make it special when he does show up. At, you yep. know, sorry for the smaller markets that probably won't get to see him as much anymore at these house shows, but. Big picture from a business standpoint. Well, that's what they got Cody for now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, I don't want to see Roman get hurt at a random house show and stuff. Right. <laughs> so I see that. Um, so with that being said, like the stipulation change or dropping stipulation, like I said, this match had no stakes. And that's what was kind of frustrating for a lot of people. The only reason I could see why they did this is one, if I had to guess, Maybe they're like, okay, we have a pay-per-view. We don't have Roman on the show. We need to get Roman on the show. So this was a way to add him in. And then, okay, looks like Drew's giving me his next big opponent. Let's get Drew in. So now it's a three-on-three. Um, it just sucks there's no stipulations. Um, <laughs> but the other thing, too, that I was kind of frustrated with is, like, um, <laughs> like for, for, for Roman, you know, couldn't they just have Drew versus Roman here? And the match, but then again, maybe they're like, let's save that for a bigger show, like Money in the Bank or SummerSlam or the Castle Show in England. So they're like, well, we're not going to give that match between the two of them their first match since Survivor Series in what twenty twenty it was. Um, yeah. You know, let's not just do it on Backlash. So you know, so I felt like that was kind of a little bit of a throwaway match here because of that. Um, <sighs> I, and also, I wonder because they're like, you know, maybe they felt like, yeah, we need to sell some tickets. We need to get Roman on the show. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, do you think the tag unification match, do you think that deserves to be a Hell in a Cell match then? I mean, I assumed when they announced that this wasn't going to be a unification match and instead it'll be a six man, I assumed, okay, well, then it'll be RK Bro versus the Usos inside Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. You know, I assumed that it would that it would be that. Um, yeah, if there's gonna be no, and I, I mean, I don't know if there's gonna be a, a universal, a undisputed universal title match at Hell in a Cell or not. Reports say there will be, but you never know. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's just I, I guess for me where I'm coming from is it's like maybe if I had to guess, maybe they, you know, got the new deal with Roman and yeah, you know, now the reports are saying he's not gonna be at Hell in a Cell next month. So they're like, Okay, so Roman's gonna be off next month. Let's get him on this show and it could set something up so when he does return, they can re come back around to this storyline. So maybe that's why they put him on this show because they knew he was gonna take next month off. So it's like mm. let's get him on here. Um and then you can still have the tag title match main event or be one of the top matches for Hell in a Cell. Right. So I feel like th- this match was just kind of audible here just because of all the different situations going on behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, with that being said, though, let me ask you, though, for Roman, it looks like he has a couple options here. One, I'm a little bummed he hasn't been on Raw since that Raw after Mania. So I feel like... He's a double champion. So it looks like he's a unified champion, but they're still both belts are still existed as two separate things. So it looks like eventually he can lose both titles separately. So with that being said, looks like he has a couple opponents lined up. It looks like Drew's being groomed as his next opponent for SmackDown. You can make the argument over on Raw that Cody Rhodes is probably going to be the top person to take it off of him. At yeah. some point, but he, I think he still got to build him up a little bit. I mentioned Bobby Lashley earlier. I wonder if and when he's going to drop those titles. Like, I kind of wonder, will Drew be the one to take it off? Like, okay, let me ask you, just, who would you like to see take what title off of him? I mean, I would say, I would say that. Because you got Drew, and because mm-hmm. you have uh, the Clash of the Castle show, mm-hmm. I feel like Drew should should be next in line um, to take the Universal title at, at least, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I know that that's happening in, what, September? Yes. Yeah. A little ways out. Um, but, it, but then again, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see you, – you got money in the bank, which, is, which should set – up at least one of Roman's opponents, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then what's after Money in the Bank? SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Okay. Yeah, and that's end of July this time around. It's not it's in August. August. End of July. Yeah. So, so well, that's the thing. It's like you think about for Drew. You know, we all know he's from the UK, so the UK show is going to be a big deal for him. He's been wanting to do that for a long time. Yeah, but also, you know, his main home in the U.S. is in Nashville. That's true. And Nashville is going to host SummerSlam this year, so I feel like SummerSlam or that UK show, one of those is is a great opportunity for Drew to do something for the fans as a yeah. make good for him winning those two WWE title reigns in front of no one at like the Thunderdome and the Performance Center. Yeah. I yeah. feel Drew earns and deserves that opportunity to win a title in front of a large crowd in, in mm-hmm. a football stadium or whatever type of stadium. So, but I just like, which title does he get? Does he get the WWE title or the Universal title? So, I mean, we could talk to her blue in the face on what scenario there, but I just, I guess what I'm saying is I would like to see Drew do something significant at either one of those shows. Right. Um, I think Cody probably could be the favorite to win Money in the Bank in July in Las mm-hmm. Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I think Drew could be one to win a title off Roman either, you know, like I said, SummerSlam or the Castle show. So that's something to keep an eye on. And I mean, we could discuss that more in person. Let's maybe see how things go on SmackDown this week and right. maybe see kind of indicate where they're going. But if Roman's taking like, you know, maybe June off or at least Hell in the Cell off. So it looks like they're trying to um extend this rivalry for as much as they can throughout the summer which is fine by right. me you know stretch it out a little bit don't don't force something right away so um but yeah overall like i said backlash was a lot of fun um as far as raw i mean there's some other stuff of significance i wanted to just touch on real quick um let me see here let me double check here oh yeah we saw Sonya Deville get fired as a WWE official. Uh, Anna Pierce says she's back to being a full-time WWE superstar. And mystery opponent for the night was the return of Alexa Bliss, who old music, kind of an old look, but she still had a Lily doll. So it was like a, maybe a fusion of her last couple gimmicks. But what'd you think of uh, Alexa Bliss's big return? 
I thought it was good. Um, mm-hmm. I'm surprised that she beat Sonya that fast. I was yeah. like, whoa, that was quick. Um, yeah. yeah, the music seemed like a hybrid of what, you know, the old and kind of like the new uh, Lily doll version. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that they that, that they did not get rid of Lily. Uh, Lily sells a lot. So yeah. <laughs> absolutely. But, they might as well put Lily on her gear. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, but like I said, I mean, there, there was a lot of women matches and presence on Raw and even NXT yes. this week as well. So I think that yes. that's a great sign. But you got Alexa Bliss back. You got uh, Lacey Evans going over to Raw and Sonya Ville, I guess. Is she Raw as well? It's like the Raw women's division is really deep right now. And, yeah. you know, you might want to move some of them over to SmackDown just to kind of balance things out. And I, and I also want to say, too, real quick, um, can, like, thank you to WWE for um, coming along with Ali, right, giving mm, him something yeah. to do. Yeah. And acting quickly on the, you know, uh, uh, Alexa Bliss. I know uh, the, I don't know if you've seen the reports of her, you know, saying that she went to Vince herself and expressed her, you know, being Frustration. upset. Yeah. Frustrations of, you know, the, having no direction and nothing creative for her since being able to come back, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's cool i'm glad that they did that they get a you know wwe gets a lot of a lot of flack for not uh, you know utilizing their talent and just letting them sit at home or sit catering or whatever you know i'm sure some people um you know uh wish they would have gone elsewhere but hey you know that's sometimes i'm sure that they just want to be used period you know they yeah. just want to work they just want to wrestle they want to be used and so feel wanted feel wanted yeah, yeah absolutely and and uh, the fact that that they've gone that instead of being like all right here we can let you go ali or you know what alexa now nah, we don't have anything for you instead of them doing that they bring them back and this was a much more structured in my opinion monday night raw um Mm -hmm. it felt like it was so much it felt like an episode of nxt almost so much action so much action they so many so much wrestling you Mm -hmm. know not i loved the theory promo Mm -hmm. uh on the little platform that they rolled out the little Mm -hmm. stage on like out on the stage that was Mm -hmm. stuff like that is cool you know yeah, I was. Oh, yeah, that's right. On like the old school, like on stage with the yeah, crowd behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. The other thing, too, I, Kevin Owens coming out as Ken Owens, his older brother to confront Ezekiel. But then yeah. him and Alpha Academy beat up Ezekiel. <laughs> like for how goofy this storyline is, they're making it so entertaining. So kudos to yeah. them. Um you know, we saw Veer Mahan come out and defeat uh, Frank Loman, which a lot of people thought was a poor man's Wardlow. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, poor guy. He's just going to be known as that now moving That's forward. Right. Um, also, we saw uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi take on Dewdrop and Nikki A.S.H., a new tag team. Uh, we mm-hmm. saw last week on Raw, Dewdrop confront Nikki A.S.H. and said, you know, Let's work together, which I think is cool, like the two Scottish women working together. And mm-hmm. even though I'm bummed that they lost, I hopefully this means – with this loss, they're going to rebuild Nikki A.S.H. And maybe Dewdrop says, hey, we're losing. Quit acting like a superhero and get, like, you know, crazy again or something. Yes. Well, even even just when the before the match started, I noticed that they didn't get an entrance on TV. Mm-hmm. So with that being like with that, I just figured, OK, maybe this is like the beginning. Right. This is like a trial. This isn't the real uh uh, do drop and Nikki ASH in that full we're form. See. Yeah, nah, this is just strictly the beginning. Even throughout the whole match, it was almost like Nikki was still kind of like, yeah, you know, in superhero mm-hmm. mode. And do drops like, what are you doing? You know, yeah, cut it out. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, in the main event, so Bianca Belair taking on Asuka, no contest because, uh, uh, you know, Becky yeah. came in, interfered, took out Bel Air. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Yeah, like I said earlier, it's going to be a triple threat now. So we'll see how this goes. So, like I said, Raw has been really good lately. I hope SmackDown can kind of turn things around. So, yeah, man, a lot of stuff to look forward to to the build to Hell in the Cell. And then eventually after that, money to bank. So, a lot of good stuff, man. So, yes. all right, well, let's start wrapping things up. Brian, where can the Clicksters find you online? 
Glicksters, you guys can find me at Brian Tronic on Twitter and Instagram. And within the ropes on Twitter and Instagram, I've taken another short hiatus. <laughs> Be patient with me. I got a baby on the way, so just preparing for that. I'll have a ton of time to sit here and 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 do a bunch of podcasting. <laughs> if that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be podcasting, and you know, I I know I, I'm looking at you right now on video. I see the crib behind you. Is the baby yep. gonna be sitting behind you as you're podcasting? Yep. Okay, okay, <laughs> good. It's gonna be good right there. Um, and I'm Baby yes. Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at baby huey 83 for everything else at in the click subscribe to us where we get your podcast at if you watch this on youtube uh go ahead leave a comment hit that like button and then uh, uh also if you want to email me you can do so in the click at gmail.com and on that note let's go home and that's the bottom line because huey said so